this screencast, I'm going to demonstrate um, how to achieve a few different uh, kind of subtle text effects using Inkscape 0.46. Uh, before we get started, uh, one of the things I want to point out is a, uh, a site that uh, a friend of mine pointed me to a while ago um, that you might find useful if you're looking for good fonts. Uh, there's things like sites like uh, dafont.com, D-A-F-O-N-T.com, and there's a you know bunch of other sites like that with a huge selection of fonts. This one's a little different. It's not not a huge selection uh, right now, anyways. Um, but the uh, the site is called um, the League of Movable Type. Get it here into the picture. Hopefully, you can see it in the screencast window. And um, so, if you go to uh, the League of Movable Type.com. You'll see they don't have a ton of fonts, but the fonts they do have are very high quality fonts. So, and they're all free, um, you know, and they're open source fonts. So, uh, so have a look at the site. It's quite a nice site, um, and it could become very, very useful. But I've already found, uh, you know, a couple of fonts that I really, really like on the site. So, um, the font we're going to use today uh, in the demos is called Chunk. That's where I got it. it was on this site. Um, I really like the look of this font. So. Um, so that's the one we're going to use. I just wanted to point that out to you. It's a good site to, to maybe check out. So we'll get started here in Inkscape. Um, the first thing I'll do is get rid of the document, or bring up the document properties dialog box, get rid of the page border. Okay. And now I just want some simple text, so we'll type, uh, I think I typed this wrong, Inkscape. Hit F1 to select it. Hold Control Shift to scale it up to a reasonable size. You can hold Control and just scroll in to zoom. Um, now I want to change to that font, so Control Shift T. All of this stuff today that I'm doing in the screencast is very, very basic stuff. It's more to show the effects than how to do them. Um, doing them is you know, very, very simple stuff. So it's chunk five. Hit apply. Close that. So there's our font. Okay, um, we'll probably just hit Control D to duplicate it and keep a copy up above. We're making several copies here of this font, but uh, or of this uh, piece of text. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is just a, a simple kind of shine-looking uh, effect on a black or a very dark background. So we'll create just a rectangle here. Hit F1 to select it. We'll bring up the Fill and Stroke dialog box using Control Shift F. And I'm going to change the color, leave it unsaturated as a kind of off black. Okay, I don't want it completely black for this demonstration, but that's your preference. There's our font. I, I just sent the, that to the background, so now I have my font here. And uh, what I will do is, uh, first of all, change this font color of this font to something very close to pure white. Okay, and next I'm going to just create a kind of glow in front of it, and a glow kind of just a subtle, subtle blur behind it. Okay, so uh, hopefully you'll pick up all these subtleties on the screencast, maybe not, depending on the, the quality of the video, but uh, hopefully you will. So the first thing I'll do is, uh, is Control D to duplicate this, and this duplicated copy, I'm going to give a blur of, I don't know, 0.3. I guess we can zoom in a little bit and see that there is, yes, a subtle blur to the background, and that's what I wanted. Okay. Next, I'm going to do, uh, you know, there's a bunch of different ways to do this, but I'm going to just use the ellipse tool, and I'm going to drag kind of an ellipse like this in front of the text. I generally like, you know, if there's a million different ways, like I say, to do this. Uh, first of all, I'll convert this ellipse to a path, Control shift c So if I double-click it, I'll see the nodes here. I will select um, this top node, and I'm going to just hold Control and drag it vertically downward. Okay, just to leave it so it's not quite so symmetrical. And now, when I select this, I'm going to just pinch it up a bit. Okay, so I'm kind of getting a half of an ellipse, and like I say, it's different ways you might want to achieve that. We'll bring it up here and just blur that. 
more subtly and probably reduce the opacity a little bit. Maybe something like that. Now what I'm, <clears throat> as you can see, what I'm trying to do is kind of get this blur to be kind of generated by the text. So as if the ground in front of the text is kind of lit up by that, I'll probably um, reduce the opacity a little bit more. Something like this. Okay, now, um, there's other variations to kind of make this look a little bit nicer. Uh, one of the things you might want to do is just apply a very slight perspective effect to this text. Uh, we'll do that now. So I could take that and, and you know, just use that as my, um, you know, one of the other things people do sometimes is they'll, they might have a more subtle blur. So if we duplicate this blurred object, stretch it down in front a little bit more, um, and then really cut back the opacity of that section here. You get a more subtle effect. Again, you can send this to the back with the page down, just so it's at the bottom. Same with this blur, actually. You want to see it disappear and then bring it back up one. Okay, so there's there's one text where you get kind of a glow in front of it. Now, um, we'll create a duplicate of this. Come down here a little ways. Now what I'm going to do is apply that slight perspective effect to this. So first thing I will do is, if this is the blurred copy on top, which it is, I've selected it and I see 0.3 blur. I'm going to take that copy and I'm going to um, lower it one step. So make sure I'm, when I click, I'm selecting the non-blurred sharp version. And now I'm going to go around this with the Bezier tool and I'm just going to try and get close. It doesn't have to be exact. Try and get close, hold control with the Bezier tool and just single click what I'm after here is a rectangle. The way I'm scrolling here, shift and the scroll wheel. Again, hold control, try and get the top corner, bottom corner, and then again, shift and scroll, and we'll close that off. Now that I have my path, that's going to be my perspective shape, I'll hit F2, select this node, I'll zoom out so I can see the whole thing here. Select the top left node. I'm going to hit the left arrow, maybe even just once. Select the right arrow, maybe even just once out to the right. Okay, so I have my path. I'll select the sharp text, hold shift, zoom in a bit here, select my path, and say path, sorry, effects, modify path, perspective. Oops, I, think I entered stuff wrong here. Or did I? I believe I did. Let's hold the sharp text, the path. Ah, my mistake. <laughs> Rookie mistake. The path that I selected is still text. I need it to be a path. So path, object to path. Make sure what you are, you know, putting in perspective is a uh, path and not a piece of text. So again, select the text first, hold shift, select the outline, path, sorry, effects, modify path, perspective. There we go. We will delete this. See, I've lost my blur for some reason there. Behind. There's the sharp one. There's the one behind. We'll just pick up the blur a little bit, back down, so let's say 0 0.1, maybe 0 0.3 again. Zoom out. So now it's probably even too subtle to, to tell, but what we've done is kind of skewed this text out a little bit at the sides, which may give you more of a kind of pseudo 3D type of look. Okay, we'll leave that alone for now. Um, that's one. Probably didn't come off so well on the screencast resolution, but uh, we're showing anyways. Sorry, we'll select all this, hit duplicate, and we'll show you another effect. Having real problems today. 
There we go. And this this uh, kind of effect, I'm going to delete these two blurred things, and we're going to do a simple um, <clears throat> kind of drop shadow. Got our two texts there. Bring up this. Make sure we're looking at text that's not blurred, which we are. Okay. Um, I'm going to uh, lighten this background a little bit. Control Shift F just to demonstrate it better. Bring up something more in the middle gray. We'll make this text, leave it white for now. Um, actually, we will uh, create a gradient of this text for this text. Make sure your stroke is off. The text we're going to do is kind of a gray to white gradient. So we'll pick our gray, probably something like that. We will uh, hit the gradient button, edit the gradient, which should pop up this gradient editor. We're going to change the other stop to fully opaque and white. Okay. Hit F2 for the, the gradient handles. Do that. So there's kind of a a very, very subtle kind of curved shape to this. And you see this on a lot of sites. You won't know what is making that text look a little richer than normal. It's usually a very, very subtle gradient that's doing it. So we'll take this, we'll just create a duplicate of it with Control D. And this duplicate, we're going to make it black. And we're going to give it a very subtle uh, blur. Okay. Click it, hit page down, send it to the back. It might go to a bit bigger blur, and you can see the kind of effect I'm getting. Okay, so that, that kind of makes your text pop a little bit, a little bit better. Okay, so it's a very, very small blur, um, but because you've got that light, kind of light gray to white gradient, you can sometimes get a very nice effect. You can get the text to really pop out. Even on a darker background, if we were to take this background rectangle and just darken it, you might, you know, when you do that, you're going to have to kind of overemphasize that shadow, that blurred layer behind. So if we want to select it, we can, you know, give it twice the blur if we wanted to kind of get that still to pop. Another thing you might want to do is um, if we select that blurred thing, take the blur off for a second, we'll bring it up a level. And what I do sometimes if I really want to see that blur a little better, and I don't want the blur to be really wide, is I'll, I'll actually offset this text. The way I do that is turn it into a path, Control shift c hit Control j We'll go up here, zoom in fairly closely, and we just want a little subtle offset. So it's slightly bigger than the text underneath it. Then we'll give our, our blur, actually we'll turn it back into a path first. There we go, we've got our blur. Send that down behind, and um, that may be a more tasteful effect. You can also take your gradient text, hold Alt, move it up slightly if you want the drop shadows to be kind of below it. Okay, so that's another way to kind of make your text pop without getting too gaudy about the whole thing. All right. Uh, next, that covers the really basic ones. This next one was kind of, um, part of it was a question I think a while back uh, from one of our viewers about how to make a kind of cutout effect. And I had done that a while back. I didn't chime in on the conversation because he, the next, was handling it fine and he gets kind of mad when I, uh, when I upstage him. So uh, I thought, hey, I'll save it for a screencast. So we'll duplicate our original text to bring it down here. This one will just move up a bit. Now, uh, again, I'm going to create a rectangle just as a background. This could be as, as big as you want. Okay, so there's my starting point. So what I'm going to do is I really want to create a certain effect, a certain cutout effect. I want this material here, this gray, to be cut out um, and, and be able to tell very quickly that it's cut out. I want a nice convincing effect. So the first thing I will do is um, probably I want to create, there's a few things I have to do, two or three things I have to do. One is I have to actually cut the shape out of the rectangle, which is fairly simple. I can just select both um, 
and do a Boolean subtraction and get rid of that. But first, um, I actually want to think about what I'm going to do. I'm going to have a shadow around this cutout, inside of the cutout. So I need a shadow of that cutout. I'll explain what I mean in a second here. We'll duplicate both. Hold. I've got this above. Hold on. Ah, my opacity is very low here. Bring that up. Again, another rookie mistake. So there's our gray. We'll send it to the back. So there's my text, there's my rectangle. I'm going to hold Shift to select both. Hit Control D to duplicate them. Next I'm going to take this rectangle that's on the outside and I'm going to drag it in a little bit. It's not critical how far, just so that when I blur it, it doesn't bleed out the edges of this other rectangle. So um, we're just going to hold Shift to select the text and do a path difference, not subtraction, difference. I'm going to take this, so now this resulting thing is, is kind of a, it's actually been cut out like a stencil. Okay. I'm going to take that stencil and I'm going to make it black and for the sake of doing this for a second here, I'm going to change the color of it to something else green. What I want to do is make sure I, I get it lined up perfectly with this text, or at least as perfect as I need it to be. There I go. Okay, so remember this green is our shadow. Okay, next I, I want to have something you'll see at the end of this, but I want to have another rectangle behind this cutout that's got a gradient on it. So what I'm going to do is create another rectangle about the same size as the black one. Doesn't actually be just bigger than the text. Here I'll change the color so you see what I'm doing. Change the opacity so it's just bigger than my text, okay? This rectangle I want to have a gradient. And I want it to be uh, start out at um, you know, middle gray. We'll hit the gradient button here. We'll edit the gradient. Make the other stop fully opaque and almost white. Okay, we'll hit F2 and we'll make that gradient go dark on the bottom, light on the top, like this. Okay, so I need that piece, which is here. I need my green cutout, which is there. And now I want to actually cut out uh, this piece with that black text. Okay, so make sure, first of all, you select the black text. I hit Alt to select what's under this green stencil. Hold Shift to select the gray. And again, do a path difference. Okay, now I've cut out the gray piece. Now I simply take this green one. I'm going to make it black, and I'm going to blur it. For now, we'll blur it eh, probably with a value of 1. I'm going to send that with the page down key behind. Okay. Then I'm going to actually take this gray material and I'm going to make it um, kind of almost a, you know, another gradient but very light. So we'll take this gray piece, we'll bring it up to a lighter gray, we'll turn it into a gradient, edit the gradient, make that other end stop fully opaque and almost white. Get that out of the way. Hit it. Select the object, hit F2. And this is, you know, all the stuff is your preference. I'm just showing you one way to get a good effect. So now we have this cutout piece with a slight gradient, light gray to white. We have a darker one here that I'm going to now pull down over this text and I'm going to hit page down once and twice. Okay, so now what I have is kind of a cutout effect. It doesn't look so convincing yet. Um, one other step is I want that black layer. I want to play with that a bit. So um, if I want to select something below my, my up, uppermost object, I select the uppermost one, hold Alt, select the next one, and I'm, you know, at all times I'm watching this fill and stroke dialog box to see it's the one I've blurred. 
that's the one that's selected. So here we go with gray, hold alt there. Now I've got the blurred one. I can actually hit the page or the down key to kind of pull that shadow down a little bit. And you can again play with that the way you want to. So that's a, a nicer effect there. So we've got a nice cutout effect. And the you know the reason I put that material behind with the dark gray to white gradient is it kind of gives you a an idea that there's light coming from the top, which kind of accentuates the shadowing. So there's a, a fairly nice cutout effect. You can do that with all kinds of text. It does work nicely with um, with a nice chunky text like this. Okay, and really that's it. Uh, there's three or four very, you know, two or three very simple um, effects that you can use on, uh, you know, maybe on your website or some graphic design work you're doing. And that's really it. I'm uh, sorry it's been uh, so long with uh, screencast. We are working on other things and uh, you know family life and all that. So, um, anyways, uh, thank you very much for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time.